so we need to open the door first before we can fix the thing let's go check out if there's anywhere else in the university we can look around if there's a library with some information or other people we can talk to just could have tried talking to that student Right, uh, let's go to the other side. Ah, oh, there's someone there. Excuse me. Sir, please, just a moment. Yes, what is it? I'm not deaf, you know. I am sorry to disturb you in your work, sir, but... This young mammothless primigenius is barely 40,000 years old. Fantastic, wouldn't you say, miss? Uh, yes. Probably. <laughs> what do you mean, probably? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? Well, you, you don't know, I see. What can I do for you, my dear child? Uh, I'll introduce myself. To tell you the truth, I don't know very much about mammoths. And I'm not here as a student. In fact, I'm a lawyer. It's all right. Nobody is perfect. All the <laughs> same, the study of the Pleistocene period is fascinating. I'm sure it is. But I'm sorry to say my current mission is totally monopolizing my time. Um, Another time, maybe. Oh, that's what they all say. But anyway, let me present myself. I'm Cornelius Ponce, Emeritus Professor and Lecturer at the University of Barockstadt. I'm proud to say that I'm head of the Department of Paleozoology at our university. Kate Walker, pleased to meet you. Hmm. Uh, he might remember Hans then, considering paleontology were the only classes that he attended. To tell you the truth, I'm looking for Mr. Hans Varlberg. He's the sole heir of a very unusual factory. My company is in charge of negotiations for the takeover of this factory. Uh, at last word, he was living in Siberia. So, as soon as my train is ready, I'll be continuing my journey eastwards. Siberia. Ah, Siberia. Uh, but what was it you said again? Said what? You mentioned a name. The person you are looking for. Vorlberg. Hans Vorlberg. Do you know him? Hans Vorlberg. How could I forget him? Such an extraordinary fellow, and so inventive. We shared a passion for mammoths, you know, and we bonded over this passion. Without it, I confess, I would have had little to do with an odd, ageless retard like Hans. At the time, we were both students. Well, sort of. Put it this way. Hans had special permission to attend paleontology lectures. You see, he didn't really have the necessary qualifications. In exchange, Hans did a few odd jobs around the university. Your Hans Varlberg sounds uncannily like the one I'm looking for. I'm not sure, my dear. Hans was above all questions of money and business. Just to imagine him running a factory, <laughs> perish the thought. Can you tell me a little bit more about him? He was always a mystery to me. He never said very much, and never quite seemed to grasp what you said to him. He expressed himself instead through his incredible mechanical contraptions. His inventions, I admit, have been much appreciated by the university. The few times we really did talk, it was about his strange interest for mammoths and a doll. Some sort of doll that obsessed him. A doll, you say? Yes. He kept talking about it. One day he described it to me. A sort of children's toy, a miniature mammoth mounted by a mount. It appears he found it in a cave not far from his home. The event all sounds very dramatic. His account was slightly confused, but it awoke a great interest in me. What do you mean? To my knowledge, there is only one tribe who made figurines featuring a mount, and that tribe is the Yukols. They live in the farthest reaches of Siberia, and for them, the dolls constituted a sacred object, illustrating one of their central legends, how such a doll made the journey from the frozen Siberian north to a cave in the French Alps is a mystery to me. Even today, it is beyond my comprehension. 
Have you considered that Hans Varlberg was maybe making it up? You said yourself he didn't seem to have all his mental facilities intact. <laughs> no, that's impossible. Hans couldn't invent the story like that. The doll is a sacred part of the Siberia legend. He described it to me in exact detail. Siberia itself is a chimera that paleontologists of the world are very fond of pursuing. So that's Siberia with a Y. So why would we question it? We've seen that we've got the doll with us actually. We could show it to him. Uh, can you help me with my mission? Please do excuse my persistence, Professor. But did Hans Varlberg ever talk about his childhood? About Valadilen and his sister, Anna? No, not that I recall. Pity. When I think of Hans, I'm always reminded of a mysterious mammoth doll he would talk about so often. A small effigy of a mammoth made of hide and mounted with its own miniature mount. Uh, how come he was so lucky? Why have I not seen this? Well, he's dropped enough hints that we probably should um, go to the train, see if we can pick up the mammoth doll and uh, have him take a look at it. He can also verify whether it's authentic. I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. No point. It's locked. Go in here. The library. See if there are some interesting books. It's up here. The Illustrated Dictionary of Plants and Mushrooms. The Friends of Barockstadt University Naturalist Society prefaced by Professor Cornelius Pons, the guy we just met for Oxford Natural Sciences Department. This is a mushroom without stem that has a chewy texture. Uh, from the Amazonian jungle. That's another game um, from the same creator, Amazon. Uh, if you like Siberia, it's probably worth uh, getting that one, I think it's available on, Ste on Steam. Uh, it's quite a good game as well. Uh, shorter than Siberia, not as epic and a bit older as well as far as I know. So the graphics again, oof, not great. But uh, definitely worth it for the story. And if you want to learn a bit more about this uh, Amazon place. It's, it's definitely worth playing um, and like I say even though the graphics and resolution and all won't be great compared to modern day um, it's still a beautiful game uh, with some gorgeous scenery uh, and at uh, atmosphere uh, so is this relevant at all Oh, it says that the it significantly affects vision and enhances its acuteness enormously. Uh, Amazonian Indian hunters discovered this effect and started using it centuries ago. 
dried and ground to a powder and consumed before the hunt commences uh, with an instantaneous effect. So it improves your vision, that's interesting. Is that all there is in this book? No. It'll probably come in handy later. See if we can find anything else that be more relevant to what we're currently doing, maybe. Nothing here. down the stairs then. Hmm. Sleepy students. These are like uh, four students we've seen in total now. It's not a very busy university it seems. What's this book? Let me steal it. Amazon Souvenir d'une Expedition. Alexandre Valambois. The rest of the book is not in French, luckily. Um, the Red Amazon Cuckoo. That looks like the bird we've seen a lot of in the train station, actually. So it's a cu cuckoo. Uh, and uh, it's from the Amazon. Ah, it's the explorer may nevertheless have an excellent view of the bird when the animal ventures to lower branches in search of forest sauvignon grapes. The wild vines... Uh, ah, the cuckoo is particularly partial to its juicy fruit. So they like eating forest sauvignon grapes. It's interesting, I guess. They even get drunk on them. Interesting. So they delegates the task of raising its young to other birds. Mm -hmm. uh, so they like like normal cuckoos. They lay their eggs in different nests, uh, different birds' nests, and then uh, will remove one of the host's eggs and destroy it or eat it. And uh, once the chick has uh, hatched, it will actually push the other eggs out of the nest. That must be quite invasive species then. The future. Would love. Blah, blah, blah. So the population was decimated because people. European settlers wanted to cultivate the grape and the birds would uh, eat them. He breeds well in captivity and is one of the jewels in the crown of the Barockstadt University Ornithological Collections. Heads of the Barockstadt aviary have undertaking a policy of birth control to attempt to balance out nature's imperfections in this artificial environment. That's interesting. A forest Sauvignon grape. Today it is very rare to find a forest Sauvignon grape in the wild. The species has been decimated by a terrible equatorial blow or something epidemic. However, in Europe, successful cultivation of the plant is, in the, pri is the pride of the Barockstadt University botany collection and has largely contributed to the survival of the species around the world. So they have that for a Sauvignon grape here. That will probably come in handy. Oh, we can even ask about it. That's interesting. 